Gentlemen, hello. Welcome back to the electronics bench. I got a couple of questions on Reddit. We're somewhere along the lines of, hey, we're building this uh, board, but we got a problem with moisture. You know, it's in a wet location. We're concerned about uh, corrosion. And then another user was saying, hey, you know, my company makes a widget, you know, didn't go into specifically what, but they, they take a, um, a clear lacquer, like a Krylon lacquer, and coat the PC boards. This isn't making sense to me. Well, what's going on here? The answer to both cases is conformal coating. And basically what that is, is it's a protective layer that is applied to the PC board to keep moisture out, or can also be done in the case of um, high voltage PC bees to keep coronal discharge loss at a minimum. In respect to the guy whose company was using an art fixative, that's really not the best way to go about that because there's there's you know a number of coatings that are designed specifically for this. You know the paint manufacturer they're making this product to the standard of an art application. So there's no control for a dielectric constant or you know how well the coating actually goes on and seals the board you know at a microscopic level. What I've got here is two examples from MG. This is silicone but they can make it out of lacquer um, or, or a harder um, when it dries it dries hard this specific silicone you can kind of you can kind of make repairs but basically it goes on and there's enough volatiles in there that the individual droplets that come down in the case of if you're using this spray can or if you're spraying this through an airless sprayer you need to dilute it so that there's enough liquid carrying the the resin to to wet out to form that impervious layer to either moisture or or coronal discharge this has a couple of benefits directly out of the can you can use a brush you can dip your whole board into a, a bath of it and it will do fine but if you're going to apply a spray because once those wa the once those droplets hit the air that'll start to dry so in order to get a good um a good impervious uh, coating, it needs to be pretty thin. This meets these military specifications for dielectric and for water exclusion. It also contains a UV indicator so that you can take a little UV light here and actually, I don't know if you can see that on the cam. See where, see where that little, right there, there's a little run. You can look at a PC board and see where you've got gaps in your coverage so those are two critical things right because if you can't inspect it you might as well have have done it wrong now these are the silicone ones um, they go on kind of soft they kind of stay a little supple they're not as resilient as the hard lacquer so the hard lacquer it goes on it dries hard um, and it'll hold up to abrasion a little bit but if you ever got a repair a board or if you've ever got to remove some of this stuff off so that you can probe and try and diagnose a failed circuit scraping the lacquer one off is just pain and suffering so actually what i had this one left over from for one of my early projects that i actually dug up for this was this guy because it's a instrument i put together maybe fifth grade and what it would do is that this is a sonar from Polaroid I was um, and it can sense up to about 30 feet depending on the uh, environment and what this would do is this would hang out over the water and get power from here and it would read how high the water was and this was this was in a tidal marsh so we would have an idea that okay you know this thing would send an alarm would close a contact if the the tide got so high because we we're starting to expect um, the levee to top over now what could you do with that uh, I don't know you can do sandbags it's just pain and suffering so let's take a look over open this I haven't opened this thing up in a decade um, 
But we started to use this stuff because once again, we're in a wet environment. You know, these ha this uh, box does have a seal on it, but we've got a number of, of penetrations into it and we had a problem. Now, the first boxes that I did, you know, I didn't know any better as, like I said, I was in middle school sometime. And I just went out and whacked in some shower sealer. Okay, what's wrong with that? Hey, silicone, silicone, right? Well, what I found was when I coated the whole board, it would mess with the little real-time clock. And, oh, okay, wasn't expecting that. What do we got in here? <coughs> oh, here's the source code. <laughs> Floppy disk. How many? How many of you know actually know what this what this uh, what this media is? Huh? Let's see, this looks like okay. So this is power. So this this would go inside uh, inside a boathouse that uh, um, sensor would get mounted on the outside of. This would be in a metal box on the inside with a uh, with hook up to a big gel cell battery, and I could plug my uh, laptop uh, into it to uh, get. Um, um, to, to record data off of it um, and I thought I guess this one I guess this is for programming only because there was another one that had relay contacts with it anyway um, so there's that and it, oh, okay so so what we got going on can you see down in there so what we have here is we have this Polaroid bought from Polaroid um, sonar module and this is a logarithmic amplifier so that it will drive a high voltage pulse into this thing and then as time goes on it's an amplifier and it's turning up its gain so that you can recover the ping so that you're listening harder and harder until it actually gets one um, now these are pretty cool I think I remember these these you could you could scrounge them out of Polaroid cameras or, or you could buy an OEM pack it came you know, two amplifiers, two uh, sensors, and two flat cables, and two little uh, uh, connectors. One of these little flat flex uh, connectors. I forget how much it was, but I remember at the time it was it was a lot of money for for a kid. Also using a basic stamp microcontroller. This was this was long before the days of uh, of Arduino and stuff like that. Um, and uh, data was stored on a uh, on a EEPROM, so you could have, get a rolling log of I think the last you know I think the last two weeks or something like that of of every of every you know 15 minutes it would take a, a measurement and then a real time clock. Um, and I don't know what this guy is. Um, and this is a little program protection. So. And then, oh, for the real-time clock, what we did is, this is the voltage regulator board. And I put a super cap on here so that it would charge um, when this thing had power, but then would hold, uh, hold the charge. And, oh, yeah. See this? This is that shower sealer. Yeah, this was, this was a pretty good, this is like a first... Complete project soup to nuts. I think I did that was not really, you know, paint by numbers. You know, and I I made this little Delrin housing in the machine shop. You know, spun up on the lathe, did some cross drills to keep the thing out. I remember making these. I made. Oh, that's flapping around. I made, I think five or six of these guys. Um. But yeah, so this is that. Ah, uh, now what I found was, yeah, when I coat the board, I would try and you know mask off the the main chip here so we could replace these. But everything else was good. It would make this little when we do it with a, um, a shower sealer. It would make the crystals run fast so that you'd like, you know, it's just the real time clock was basically useless. And I mean, you know, this is. Uh, I'm gonna jab my finger. 
Let's see. But the other thing that we would see is water would get trapped behind this thing. You know, because it really goes on like a paste. Ah, uh, yeah, don't... Oh, so gross. I remember that being a problem. Yeah, this doesn't look like it has... Okay. So to show you that UV protectant, let me grab... I'm going to grab a PC board and I'll mask it up if there's any gas left in this uh, spray can if we won't be able to shoot it. So let me let me clear off and see if I can find a PC board. We'll go ahead and, and see what we can do. Okay, so I found a PC board here, a donor. What we're going to do is uh, we're just going to mask off, you know, not that it matters like I'm never going to use this board, but just to show you the process. Now you'd want to use like capped on tape or something like that, but uh, yeah, my give a shit's broken. So we're just going to kind of go like that. Well, okay, fine. Let's try and do a half ass job. So let me set up the GoPro, see if I can get some uh, video outside that's not absolute cancer and we'll shoot this. So it's more or less dry. Yeah, that's that's basically it. Basically. I've gone ahead and pulled the masking tape off. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, GoPro footage is completely unusable because I, I suck. Let's turn the lights off. So basically that glows, I'm not sure if you're able to see that, I left this corner unsprayed. So you can see how like all along these solder joints you see this white goop and then over here, this area right here, it's kind of dark. That's where it didn't cover. Um, gold fingers came out pretty good on this side, but as you can see, my masking job, my two minute masking job, didn't really protect those. There's some splotches on there. So that's, um, that really tells you where you've gotten coverage. Oh, shoot. Well, now I guess it's not. Ah, it's all sticky. Anyway. Uh. So, that way that gives you a way of inspecting it. So, um,. Yeah, that's in, uh, that's uh, conformal coating. Um, give you an idea of uh, of what's there, and uh, yeah, if you have any comments, uh, leave them below. Um, I'll uh, provide a link to um, to these guys in the doodly do, and then uh, I don't know what you think. We should get this running again. I mean, I don't I don't have access to water anymore, so I don't know what the point would be. But uh, yeah, tell me what you think. All right, see you later, guys.